Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ed with edhard.me and I'm going to take just a minute and show you some tips on cutting miter joints with a miter saw. So, I've got right here a uh, float frame that I have uh, uh, worked on and uh, if you want to learn how to build your own float frame, you can go over to edhard.me and look at my uh, post on building a float frame. But in a, in a piece like this, you can tell it's going to be pretty important to have your miter joints cut exactly at 45 degree angles. And I have found, at least with my saw and some others that I've worked with, that oftentimes the markings on your saw aren't exactly uh, 45 degrees or you know however they work out. So uh, let me just show you real quick a tip that uh, I recommend when you're getting ready to cut miter joints. So I'm gonna just move my workbench over here. Okay, I've got here uh, my saw. I'm going to turn it <clears throat> a little bit um, so you can see it. And I also have a, uh, a carpenter square right here. And um, this carpenter square has got a nice flat uh, edge to it. And I'm going to use this uh, to make sure that my saw is cutting at exactly uh, 45 degrees. So I'm going to put it down and Obviously, it should be unplugged when you do this. And I'm going just to turn it to the 45 degree mark right here. But uh, I'm gonna hold my carpenter square right here. Let me see if I can get you a better angle. By the way, I am filming this with my iPhone and um, I think that's pretty cool that the iPhone uh, can film these videos, and if you want to see um, some of the little tools I use for it, just uh, head over to edhard.me. But now I'm just going to hold this and ever so slightly adjust my angle, and I'll lock that in place and open up my just to make sure that that's. Staying right in at that 45 degree angle. Oh, sorry, I'm getting my arm in the way so you can't see it here. Making sure that uh, that stays at 45 degrees. And that is just about perfect. It's not just about perfect, it is perfect. Okay, you can see that, that when I've measured it with the square, the actual angle uh, to do a 45 degree mitered cut actually measures out to about 44 degrees. And this can be a big deal if you're cutting molding or if you're cutting uh, the edges for the float frame uh, because you'll, get, you'll have some real gaps and problems to get that wood to line up. So that's why I recommend this carpenter square method and, uh, and measuring your saw. Uh, and don't just trust the markings on the base. I also want to show you what I did here. So this is a little switch that normally uh, that will click into each one of these little uh, uh, grooves here to lock it in at the, the zero degree and the um, 25, 45 degree angles. But I've taken this little nut right here and I've just tightened it up so that switch doesn't move. That gives me a free flow. So when I need to come in and, and uh, be right here at the 40, about 44 degree angle, that I can hold it there. Otherwise, it's the saw, because it has that clip, it's gonna try to force you to, to move that direction just a little bit. And then uh, you just turn that to lock it in, and we're good to go. Okay, so here's the corner of the frame where I've uh, measured, and uh, that fits together nicely. Uh, so I don't, sorry about the shadow there, I don't have a uh, big gap where those two pieces of wood should come together. So I'm sure you've heard the woodworking slogan, measure twice, cut once. And so my advice to you is to make sure when you're cutting miter joints, don't just trust the, the markings on your, on your miter saw, but get your carpenter square and measure and make sure you get those cuts at exactly a 45 degree angle.